Fat Sheet Drop number nine is here. And it's one of the largest drop yet with a total of five fat sheets covering eight implements and vehicles. But before we jump into the fact sheets, let's recap the week real quick because it's been a busy week of news drops each day. Monday, we learned about the neighbors that will be on at least Riverbend Springs. Tuesday, there was another trailer for Farm Sim 25 outlining several of the added features, but so many of those features were left off the list. What's your favorite feature coming to the game? Let me know in the comments. It was also a day that we were allowed to release video of our gameplay that we recorded during the preview event held on October 18th. Hump Day saw a trailer for Riverbend Springs and it included lots of cool areas that I can't wait to take a much closer look at. Thursday's blog post was related to storage of hand tools. Now that was totally out of the blue and consumables for balers and wrappers. And of course today, we have the fact sheet rundown. Just 18 days until launch, will next week be another frenzy of info drops? That's next week, and this is now, so let's get on with the fact sheet rundown. New Holland will have a representation in the medium tracker lineup with the T7 WLB PLMI, 224 horsepower tractor. Now if you're like me and you're curious, what do all these letters mean? Well, LWA stands for Long Wheelbase and PLMI, well it stands for the PLM Intelligence, which itself is a digital and telematics platform from New Holland that provides connectivity, remote viewing, and data management for agricultural tractors. I still don't really understand what that means but it does look like we're gonna get a cool LCD display on the wheel itself. A good general purpose tractor. This tractor has a weight of 7.3 tons and a cost of $239,500. Has a decent road speed of 31 miles per hour and having a chance to tour the Magna factory in Wisconsin, it has given me a whole new appreciation of the complexity of the variable CVT transmission that is used on this new Holland tractor. Shown here, we have the Vanderstand Rexus 1230 roller. Online, the roller is available in six different configurations from 6.5 meters to 12.3. The roller costs $81,000 and can be configured with a seeding system that will hold 180 liters of canola or sugar beet seeds. There are two interesting discrepancies with respect to the power requirements and weight. Online, it appears that it needs something greater than 60 horsepower while the fact sheet lists 170. I could see where maybe the smaller 6.5 meter roller requires only 60 horsepower and larger rollers require more, but that's an awful big step up for just another two meters of roller. The other thing is the weight. Online, it lists the weight between 3,300 and 7,700 kilograms. Meanwhile, the fact sheet shows 8,300 kilograms or 8.3 tons. Another new brand coming to Farming Simulator 25, we finally see the long-awaited Aprilla RX 125 motorbike. Teased in the CGI trailer, sort of confirmed with the pre-FarmCon 25 reveal, we have the new way of getting around the map at a fairly good clip, having a top speed of 62 miles per hour and a working speed of 7 miles per hour. What's all that about? What do you think we'd be doing on a motorcycle that would involve a working speed? At first I thought I'd go back and maybe do spot spraying, but that would involve something like a backpack sprayer, wouldn't it? Either way, it's super cheap, and it's an easy way to check the back 40 at just $4,000, and it'll be a fun way to explore areas of the map. In our third fact sheet, it's all about cloths the Jaguar 990 TerraTrack Forage Harvester. A big machine in all respects, and a big price tag of $625,500. A big engine, 925 horsepower, and a big fuel tank holding 1,500 liters. A heavy footprint of 18.6 tons. But since it has front tracks, it's not that big of a deal on the overall impact of the ground. The TerraTrack's tracks seem to have a trick up their sleeve when it comes to turning. The front drive wheels will lift up somewhat 
to lower the overall contact patch with the ground, which causes less disruption of the soil as a result of the turn. And then once the turn is over, the front drive wheels once again lower down to increase the contact patch, thus reducing the overall ground pressure. This is the best of both worlds with respect to lowering ground pressure and the agility of a better turning radius causing less damage to the ground. In the fact sheet, it's paired up with the Orbis 900 forage header, and that's used to harvest corn typically, but also lists wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, soybean, and sunflowers. The header has a working speed of 6 miles per hour and a working width of 9 meters, and it will cost an additional $127,000 to the cost of this setup. For our next fact sheet, we have a Case IH Puma 260 CVX Drive, a medium tractor that has an engine config of 302 horsepower. This fact sheet also differs a bit from the website. The Case IH site lists the max power at 260 horsepower. And at first I thought, well, it's because I'm looking at the Asia Pacific site. But for some reason, I also changed the North American and UK site and all three show up as 260 horsepower. Now, moving beyond that, at full clip, the Puma can be hard to catch going at full speed at 31 miles per hour, but be sure to leave plenty of time to slow down because this tractor has a weight of 7.3 tons and a cost of $270,500. The Puma is shown here connected to the RB456 HD Pro round baler. And that's able to produce bales varying in sizes from 125 centimeters to 150 centimeters. Remember, with Farm Sim 25, we need to fill our balers with twine and net wrap. For those who do not want to fill the baler via pallets, you'll be able to have the option of filling the baler similar to how we could buy vegetable boxes in the premium expansion for harvest. The baler has a working speed of 11 miles per hour and will require 120 horsepower and has a cost of $65,000. For our final fact sheet this week, we have the Abe 50, a transport vehicle seen for the first time on the Tokyo Game Show trailer. The one in the game, or at least the one on this fact sheet, has a traditional engine, whereas online they come both in electric and diesel variety. A small vehicle will be ideal for running small pallets around your rice planter or even baler supplies out to the field. With a top speed of 23 miles per hour, be careful of those bumps as the single front wheel can make it rather unstable. At least that was my experience with the early access build. At $5,500, it's slightly more costly than a motorbike and probably a lot less fun to drive around on. Try to keep it on level ground though because that poor little three horsepower engine does not take hills very well. And that's a wrap folks. Just two more Fact Sheet Fridays left to go. What kinds of tools and machines are you hoping to see come to the game? Don't forget to go check the website for new brands and also click into each brand to see if there's any new things listed as Giants is updating that page every Friday. Lots of news coming out this week. If you haven't had a chance to keep up, I don't blame you as I had a hard enough time keeping up with creating the content. I have put a link to my FS25 news playlist at the end of this video. If you're ready to pull the trigger and pre-order Farming Simulator 25, it would do me a great honor if you would use my affiliate link down in the description. Of course, that affiliate link is gonna work for PC players. It's gonna be the fastest way to get the game as we've not yet heard if Giants is gonna coordinate a global release across all platforms. In addition, if you are maybe looking for a physical copy of the game, then consider clicking on my Amazon affiliate link where you can pick up the collector's edition. It's going to have the USB ignition lock as well as a lot of other cool add-ons. Those on console, if you want a physical copy of the game, well you can use the same Amazon link, but just be sure to select the proper platform, PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X or S. Soon, we'll be able to count down the days for the release on our fingers. As such, it'd be super awesome if those of you who are not subscribers could click on the little red button. It really go a long way to helping us get our goal of 50,000 subs by FS25. And finally, it's safer to give me the thumbs up than it is to go hitchhike. So go ahead and hit that also. It helps YouTube recommend the video to others and it will really help go a long way. 
you're the best. Until next time, happy farming.